Hi, and welcome to Population Ecology Lesson 5.1. What role or roles do orcas serve in their ecosystem? We'll be gathering information for argument, uh, looking at biotic and abiotic factors affecting orcas. Hi again, my name is Laura McGinty. I'm a high school biology teacher at Ballard High School, and it is good to see you again. You have three goals today. After reviewing this PowerPoint, you should be able to identify biotic and abiotic factors that affect the Puget Sound ecosystem and the orcas. You're going to create a Puget Sound food web that includes both resident and transient orcas. And then finally, you're going to explain how removing organisms from the food web may impact the biodiversity of the entire ecosystem. The food web that we're gonna focus on is a marine food web. Again, your goal is to identify biotic and abiotic factors that affect the Puget Sound ecosystem and the orcas. And to show this, you're going to create a Puget Sound food web that includes both the resident and the transient orcas. To do this, we have to understand the two different factors that exist in an ecosystem. The first is biotic. Bio, as you recall from the introduction to your biology class, bio means life. So these are all the living things that exist within the environment. That could include people, animals, plants, etc. Abiotic, on the other hand, the prefix a means not, so not living or non-living. These are gonna be all of the factors that are non-living. For example, waves, sand, rock, air, wind, light, temperature, uh, et cetera. Biotic factors uh, have biological impacts on the food web. Every action that is made by a living organism will affect something else. This could include competition, cooperation, access to prey, predators, and like. What are some other examples of biotic factors that you can think of? We'll also have to look at abiotic factors. These are the non-biological impacts on the food web. Those are gonna be things like waves and rocks and sand and especially the chemicals in our food web. Remember, biomagnification means that the predator on the, uh, at the top of the food web is going to accumulate the most amount of toxins uh, from the bottom up. So what are the other examples of abiotic factors that you can think of? We're gonna do a quick review on a food web. Uh, you've seen these before in uh, middle school science. You've seen it probably in ecosystems. So we need to take a look and break down the particular images here. When we uh, see these arrows, we notice that they are connecting between two organisms. The direction of the arrow indicates that the organism ate the other one. So in this particular case, the fox ate the rabbit, so the calories in the rabbit uh, go into the fox. So that is why the direction of the arrow goes that particular way. So in the marine food web, we want to take a look at what the foundation is, or what the base of that marine food web is, and that is phytoplankton. Phytoplankton is essential because it does photosynthesis. It takes the uh, energy from the sun, uh, from light, and converts it into stored chemical energy. We also have zooplankton. Zooplankton are animals that eat phytoplankton, and these can often include larvae of many species. So here's your task. The materials that you're going to need uh, are paper, pencil, and the organism cards to help you build this marine food web. The organism cards are on the next few slides. There's also a separate file for printing directions on these. You're going to print and cut out the cards to organize them, or you're going to write the names of the organisms on the piece of paper. You can see an example on the bottom uh, corner of the slide here. Show the relationship between each organism with an arrow pointing to the consumer. This might take some research on your part to figure out the feeding relationships of the organisms that you're about to be introduced to. Finally, check your work with the very last PowerPoint slide. So let's meet the organisms. We have a blue heron, as you can see in this image here. 
marine bacteria, zooplankton, this is a copepod, and then a harbor seal. We have phytoplankton, which are all of these here, the sea otter, a resident orca, and salmon, protozoa, transient orca, bull kelp, herring, sea urchin, we have eelgrass, a gray whale, and krill, which is also a type of zooplankton. So we're going to pause at this point. This is where you are going to take the time to use that pencil and paper and the organisms that you were just introduced to, and you're going to create that marine food web. All right, welcome back. Uh, now's the time to do a quick analysis. We've got a few questions for you to jot down. So have some pen and paper ready or uh, type it out as you're listening along. So question one, uh, number one on your food web analysis. How are the roles that the transient and resident orca have in the food web similar and how are they different? Two, how will the web change when one organism is removed? You're gonna try and remove one organism and review the food web. Explain how this changed that ecosystem and then repeat this process for an additional organism and explain. Three, recall biodiversity from lesson 3.2. The number of different ecosystems, types of species, and the genetic diversity of the individuals in this region. Explain how removing organisms may impact the biodiversity in the ecosystem. Four, list abiotic factors that might affect the marine food web. Five, list different roles orcas serve in their ecosystem. So let's apply this information to a different ecosystem. Here we're looking at balsam fir trees, which are common on the islands of Lake Superior. You can see that down here at the bottom. Moose first came to Isle Royale around 1900. Population boomed to about 2000 uh, by the 1950s. Then we have wolves that first came to Isle Royale around 1950. This is a simple trophic web. The question is, is it top down or bottom up controlled? Meaning is the top controlling the populations of the ones below? or are the populations at the base controlling the population size at the top? Think about what processes are involved, who consumes what, and the uh, amount that is necessary for each system in relationship to each other. So to break this down a little further, let's ask these questions. If the wolf populations go down, what happens to the moose? Is, it going, is that moose population going to increase? Will it decrease? And what about the trees based on the changes to the moose population? Does this change in the immediate compared to over time? Conversely, if we look at the moose population, if that goes down, what's going to happen to the wolves? Will the wolf population change? And if so, how? And then what happens to the tree population? And again, thinking about time factors as well. Are we going to see an immediate change? Uh, or, and then what happens to that change as it happens over time? Well, if you still have some questions on that, reach out to some of your peers in your class online uh, or reach out to your teacher and have a quick discussion. Finally, in summary, we're gonna do a quick check for our understanding. You should be at a place now where you can identify biotic and abiotic factors that affect the Puget Sound ecosystem and the orcas. You can describe the food web of a resident orca whale, and you can explain how removing organisms from the food webs may impact the biodiversity of the entire ecosystem. So your next step is to make an entry in your learning tracking tool titled, What Role or Roles Do Orcas Serve in Their Ecosystem? But before we go, we have to do a quick confirmation or correction of our food web. So here's a key to the marine food web. I want you to pay close attention to 
uh, where our producers and primary consumers are, secondary consumers, and the directions of the arrows as they travel along. So for example, we have uh, our gray whale over here, and the gray whale consumes zooplankton and krill. So we have an arrow traveling in the direction from the krill to the gray whale. Right. So pause the video on this, take a look at it, do con uh, confirmation or correction on your work. Uh, think about your reasoning behind uh, where your placements are, where the arrows are going uh, so as you're doing your uh, corrections. Really appreciate your time. Thanks so much for spending time with me on this. And I do hope that you have a beautiful uh, rest of your day. Bye.